Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to another Isotope Ozone 7 tutorial. Today we're checking out the Vintage Limiter plugin within Ozone. Uh, the Vintage Limiter loosely models the Fairchild 670, uh, which is a tube limiter with a soft knee. So the Vintage Limiter is great uh, for use on, on buses, on instruments if you need a limiter, on like an instrumental track. Um, but really the main thing I use it for and what we're going to use it for today is as a mastering limiter. It's a great limiter if you're looking to add some analog vibe to your tracks while also adding loudness. Now just a little side note here off screen I took our setting fire session, I mixed it to my taste, bounced it out of that uh, previous session, dropped it in a new session, added some uh, mastering uh, modules in Ozone here so I've got the EQ. Uh, just to drop out the low, some of the low end, the exciter, the dynamic EQ to roll off the uh, high end and control the bass a bit, vintage tape just for color, the imager for stereo width, and then lastly in our mastering chain is the vintage limiter. So right now I have the threshold all the way up, so we are applying no limiting to the signal. So let me just show you a quick before and after, um, and then I'll, uh, I'll crank down the threshold just so you can get an idea of the amount of loudness that you can get out of this limiter. Now, I don't want you to think that having a very loud master is necessarily that important. Uh, what you should be going for is competitive loudness with the industry, but also dynamic clarity. So don't crush your tracks just because you want them to sound, sound as loud as everything out there. Um, some tracks don't need to be that loud. I'm also just using the uh, logic loudness meter off to the side here just to monitor my LU integrated uh, loudness level. All right, so let's get into this. So like all limiters, we have a threshold control and a ceiling, an output ceiling. The threshold controls how much limiting actually happens. So as the signal passes the threshold, the limiter kicks in and begins to limit the signal. Now, because this is a mastering limiter, it's essentially an adaptive uh, limiter, meaning that as you pull down the threshold, it limits more and more, but also adds uh, upward gain to make the song louder and this is a way uh, we can achieve uh, the maximum loudness uh, level that we want for our particular song. Again, it, it depends on, on your preference and the preference of, of the musician or band or artist that you're working with. So as you pull this down, you're going to get more limiting. Um, the output ceiling is essentially the maximum volume that the signal um, will be. So it's like this, it's the, the level um, that the actual limiter limits at. Now for mastering, I typically don't put it at 0.0, .0 I put it at negative 0.1. Some people go down to negative 0.3. Um, I'm gonna go to negative 0.1. When you have it at 0, 0, um, sometimes you can still get a little bit of clipping, so this essentially catches any uh, clips that we normally would have. So let me just pull this down, and I'm essentially just, just gonna look at my loudness meter over here, and I'm gonna try to shoot for about negative 12 integrated loudness. I don't want it to be negative 10, because it just, sounds too crushed with this song. So let's uh, let's give this a shot. And there we go. The song is much louder and it's been limited as well. The True Peak Limiting button enables the limiter to take into account not only the levels of the digital signal, but also the levels of the analog signal that will eventually uh, be produced when you listen back to the song as the uh, signal comes out of your, uh, your converter or your inter audio interface. So this, is, this can be necessary because an analog signal's peak level can exceed its digital signal peak level um, by 3 dB or more. Also, sometimes with true peak limiting on, you'll find uh, that the signal will still clip when you have an output ceiling of zero, zero. So sometimes, again, this is another, uh, another reason to come down to negative 0.1 ceiling as opposed to having a zero, zero ceiling. Now, there's three modes that you can pick from, analog, tube, and modern. Analog gives you a fast attack and a variable release time, 
and provides the tightest bass response with a thicker limiting quality. So this helps to bring out the low end transients while still providing a very smooth limiting quality. The tube mode is nonlinear, which means that uh, depending on the incoming signal, you, there is a wider sort of palette of sonic characteristics that can result. I find that the tube has a lot more color to it, but it can also be a, a little more bright than the analog mode. It also has a variable attack and release time. The modern mode is essentially a hybrid of analog and tube. What it does is it blends the thick vintage uh, characteristics with the wide range nonlinear characteristics of the tube mode. Let me play through the track and I'll switch between all three modes so you can hear the tonal differences of each. So for this song, I'm going to go with the analog mode uh, just because I'm finding with this song, there's a lot of like high and mid range, almost raspiness that's coming through that I really just don't like. And when I use the tube mode, it's just too much. It's too raspy. It's too bright. The modern mode tames it down a bit, but it's still not enough. I want um, to take this song that's has to me sounds like it has some control issues and control and smooth it out with the analog mode. So that's what we're going to do. I also pulled down the threshold a bit more because when we control the, the that, that high-end raspiness, I feel like we can add more volume to it without it sounding like garbage, frankly. So the character control controls both the attack and release time of each of the three modes. Now, depending on which mode you use, the attack and release time will vary to essentially adopt that mode. Um, so for punchier music, I like to pull it down more towards fast to have quicker, uh, punchier transients for uh, music where maybe it's a little uh, softer and smoother. I'll, I'll pull it up to more to slow, but I never use extreme values. I'm usually generally using something more toward the middle and then leaning more towards the fast, punchy side or the s slow, smooth side. So I'm going to come down to uh, fast a, a bit here and let's listen to this one more time. And I'm going to bypass um, all of Ozone just so we can hear uh, the before and the after. And there you go, that's the Vintage Limiter and Isotope Ozone. In the next video, we're gonna check out another limiter. We're gonna check out the Maximizer, which is a more modern mastering limiter. Um, and then after we're done with that, we'll be done with all of the uh, Ozone modules. So after that, we can sort of take a step away from the individual module tutorials, and we can focus on mastering some songs and mastering in some specific genres. So that's where I plan on taking this series um, from that point on. So that's my tutorial on the Vintage Limiter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.